What's up, everyone? I'm Katrina Many, and I'm here to take you through this week's Workout Wednesday challenge. In this challenge, we're going to be looking at workbook actions. If you would like to learn more about workbook actions, I've created a video where I go in depth about the topic and some more use cases for them, and you can learn about it here. For now, let's take a look at this week's challenge. We can see that when I click on a bar chart, we need to filter not only this chart, but also this line chart as well. And we also need to change the region name to the state. So when I click on a region to investigate it, I can see additional information about each state. I'm gonna hop into a workbook. You can see here that I've already pulled in the Plugs Electronic Hands-On Lab. I've also applied some of the formatting options in here and removed a lot of the columns that we aren't going to need just out of simplicity. So I'm gonna delete these steps. Next, we wanna create the bar chart and the line chart that are gonna show our sales by region and our cost by region. I've already completed these steps for the sake of time, but I will walk you quickly through how I created them. First, I did a child element off of my data source so I could create the bar chart. I put my region in the Y axis, my sum of sales in the X axis, then I duplicated the region field so that I could pull it on color, and I applied the custom color using the pencil option that appears here. Next, I came to Element Format, applied the title that was in there for Sales by Region, click on Region to Investigate. I removed the title for the Y axis, removed the labels for the X axis, and hid the grid lines here. I also checked to add the data labels and applied them to be plot and put the position at the end. You could, for this scenario, use the data labels or the total data labels are going to basically give you the same thing. Then I duplicated this element so that I could maintain some of the formatting for my cost by region, uh, but this time I pulled in my sum of cost and I truncated the date for quarter and then applied the custom formatting for my quarter. Then I went to the element format applied or changed the title to cost by region, went to Y axis and hid the grid lines that's already kept from there, remove show legend, remove the data labels since if we left them, they would show us our endpoints that we don't want, went to line style and applied what was outlined, the smooth, solid two point showing points that are circle and eight pixels. All right, so now that we have our visuals created, we can start to think about creating the actions. So let's hop back into the workbook to see what we need these actions to do. When I click on this, I need my store region to filter to apply to both elements. And I also need to have a multi-select option for this that also applies to both elements. What I'm going to do is first go to my data source since all of these filters are gonna be applying to both of the elements that I have in here. This is the easiest way that I like to build these. So I'm gonna click filter and then convert to page control. I'm gonna apply the formatting that is needed for this or the element properties, which is to allow multi-select. We wanna uncheck show no option. And then we also wanna uncheck show histogram. I'm gonna pull this down here so it'll be closer to our visuals. Next, I'm gonna come back up here to store region and do the same thing where I'm gonna create a filter and then I'm gonna to convert to page control but this one, I do not want to allow multi-select. I only want an end user to be able to filter to one region at a time. I'm going to remove the null option and as well as removing the show histogram. So we'll pull this down here. So now we can start to create our actions. In Sigma, the way that you figure out what element to use to create your action is to think about what element you want to prompt the action. So when I click in this bar chart, I want something to happen. So I'm gonna to go to my bar chart element, and then I'm gonna to go to the action section in my bar chart. These are actions that are gonna be applied when someone clicks into this bar chart. I'm gonna click the plus sign, and we do wanna set a control value for our first action. We wanna set the store region, and we're gonna define it as values from a column, but we do want it to be based from our store region. So basically we're just telling Sigma, hey, whatever bar I click on, populate that value in here. So let's test that out real quick just to make sure that's working. Yep, that's, that is expected. But we can see here that we only get one bar for this, and this is 
not the most useful visualization in the world. We want to show some additional information. So I'm going to click out of this to clear that. Next, what I want to do is replace my region here with the state. So I'm going to click the plus sign. And for this one, instead of set control value, we're going to select modify element. This basically means we're going to change how this element is composed or built. So I'm going to select the target element. We want to change these sales by region. And what do we want to modify? We basically want to swap some columns because we're going to put one in and take one out. And we're going to switch them in, in place. So I'm going to swap my first column into the Y axis. Where do I want to put it? And what do I want to put there? I want to put the store state. So now when I click here, we can see that we have the list of states, but it doesn't quite do exactly what we want it to do. So why is this not doing what we want it to do? Something that you might have noticed when we looked at our set store value was that there were two options that we could choose from our list. So we have our store region and our store region one. This is why I put it in there as a hint to name them something really specific. So what you want to do is make sure that you're prompting the action with a column that's still going to be in there. So we remove the thing that was supposed to tell Sigma what to do. So let me go back in and we'll rename this for store region by color. And then I'm just going to reset this so that we make it easy to understand what's happening. Again, I've got my store region and my store region by color. And let me go back to the action. And here we can see that Sigma is populating this for the store region by color. So now when I select on this, it does have something to populate in and it did swap out our states in here. So next, when I click on here or clear out of this, we can see that Sigma is still keeping the states listed in here. We haven't told Sigma what to do yet or how to swap in the regions. To do that, all we need to do is duplicate this. And instead of saying swap in store state, we want to swap in store region. So again, not the store region by color, but the other store region that it was in there before. So all we did was tell Sigma, instead of having it be built this way, build it this way, and then swap back and forth between these two. So now when I click on here, we can see that it is filtered to this one. I'm also seeing that I do need to apply my sorting again, so I'm just gonna go back and do that real quick. For now we can see that the sort is staying the same and that the filters and the actions are applying as expected. Let's clear this out and just double test our product, product type filter. Yep, it filtered this. And when I click on here, we can see that this still maintains the same filters, but that we're only looking at our south region here. All right, and that is all we need to do for the actions. The next steps that we would do would be move all of these elements to a new tab, adding a title element in here, and then hiding the data tab and renaming this. Thanks for tuning into this video to learn about actions in Sigma. I hope you see how powerful they can be when you combine multiple actions together to create a really interactive workbook. Thanks again, and I'll catch you in the next one.